Hey everybody, it's Kathy and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to talk about the weight loss plan that I am following to lose weight. I am not following a diet. I have been a lifelong dieter. I'm sick and tired of counting points and calories and measuring things. So I'm going to show you how I've been losing weight. And this is the first time in probably maybe my whole adult life where I actually feel like I have found something that truly I can live with. And it is a healthy way of living and a healthy way of losing weight. So a little bit about me, I'm 55 years old. I was a chubby kid my whole life. I was rewarded as a child with sugar. I became a sugar addict. My, um, vice is like candy not so much desserts i'm not really a food connoisseur i could eat the same thing day in day out like i don't get excited about food but there how did i put on weight is i made a lot of bad choices and by bad choices i mean i ate a lot of sugary things candy when we'd go out to eat, I would get like really high fructose, high carb junk, basically a lot of fast food. And that's how I put weight on. I've been a member of Weight Watchers, I think since I was 24, after I had my daughter. You know, I've lost weight with them, but then I put the weight back on. I just get bored. Last, almost a year ago, I went for my yearly exam and my doctor was telling me, well, your cholesterol is getting a little bit high. You know, your sugar is getting a little bit high. I really think that um, you really need to do something because you're getting at the age, you know, you don't want to end up getting high blood pressure, diabetes, or some other disease. So he said, are you open to meeting with a nutritionist? And I said, sure. So what happened was in January of this year at my doctor's clinic, so a lot of you ask, can you have her name? You can't because it's only for my doctor's patients, but I urge you to call your healthcare provider because this may be available for you and you're not aware. And even if you can't meet in person, like you can meet virtually and that's also very useful. So what we did was for eight weeks, we met virtually on Zoom for about an hour and a half once a week. And the nutritionist basically is trying to um, tell us how to eat healthy and, and how to erase, you know, the diet culture from our brain because I feel like the whole diet culture is like branded in my brain. There's good foods and there's bad foods. And the dietitian is saying, no, that is incorrect. And by good foods and bad foods, I mean like talking about healthy foods like corn, lima beans, rice. You know, some people in diet culture, they say those things are bad. And yes, they may have more uh, calories. You know, they may have more sugar in them, but they're not bad. They're not bad like going to a fast food restaurant and eating high fat saturated burger and fries. So it's really been a challenge for me to wrap my head around this way of thinking. And I just started my fourth month and I'm already starting to see changes. And what I wanna share with you today is just a general overview of the balanced plate approach. That is what we are using. And then if you want further information, I will uh, go back into my course notes and I'll do some research and I can create some specific videos like on balanced lunches, breakfasts, you know, dinners, snacks, what have you. So if that is something that is of interest to you, be sure to let me know. So, so far to date, I began on July 9th or 10th. It was after I came back from Alaska and I'm down 14 pounds. I just weighed myself this morning. So I'm losing weight at a slow but steady pace. I feel this is a consistent way to lose weight. It's working and I'm not obsessing about food anymore because what I found before whenever I was in the diet culture is that I was constantly thinking, okay, um, I had eight points for my breakfast. So for lunch, I can go to, you know, fast food place, get a burger and a fry, and that'll be like 20 points. And then I'll just skip supper. Like you can still eat not great food on plans where you're counting calories or points and you're almost like cheating and that's not really teaching me how to eat healthy in a way that is sustainable for the rest of my life. So as I said, I am a sugar addict. You can go watch my emotional eating video here. I dive in depth into my emotional eating and how sugar is a trigger for me, but I was eating a lot of sugar. 
And you can see like this picture from Father's Day, how my face is so bloated. And you can see my face today and it looks a lot thinner. I have to tell you, I just quit cold turkey, quit bringing candy into my house. Because whenever I do the grocery order, I put, you know, three bags of Werther's caramels. I just, I love those things so much. And I would just sit and stuff my face watching TV, eating them. And I'd have, you know, one unwrapped before I was eating the next one. I wasn't even enjoying it. So for me, I use food as a soothing device. And this is something that I have been working very hard on the last three months and probably will continue to do so in the coming months as I continue on this journey. So I'm not obsessed with food. I just make the wrong choices. And what I have noticed, I really like to analyze things. I like to analyze myself. I crave sugar and fast food whenever I'm feeling an emotion other than happy. So if I'm stressed, if I'm sad, if I'm lonely, then I crave those sugary treats. But I notice when I'm happy, I don't crave them. So that's telling me that it, it's just like a, a soothing mechanism. Some people use alcohol, some people, you know, gamble. I eat sugar and make really bad decisions when it comes to the food that I put into my mouth. So after the, I think it was eight weeks, virtual course was over with, I emailed the dietitian and said, would it be possible for us to work one-on-one? -on -one? And she said, absolutely. So we had been meeting about once every six to eight weeks. What happens is she says, okay, what do you eat in a day? And then she was kind of showing me, well, this would be a better choice. So we're not counting calories. We're just taking a dinner plate. I will measure how big my plate is and I'll, I'll put it on the screen. So basically you put a line, imaginary line down your plate. So one half is all vegetables. On the other half, divide that so you have two quarters. One half is protein and the other half is fiber rich, healthy carbs. Yes, I know people poo poo on carbs. I'm eating them. They are good for you. You know, if you don't agree, then this plan isn't for you, but it's working for me. So since implementing this way of thinking, it has totally changed my approach to eating. So whenever I'm thinking about, okay, what am I going to have for dinner tonight? I'll think, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna have like some chicken and then I'm gonna have uh, maybe some broccoli and some cauliflower. So I load up, you know, the vegetable side with vegetables. And then my meat portion is probably about the size of my palm. And that's probably about four ounces, which is a perfect size for me. I'm not like heaping each section of the plate. I'm just like getting enough food, really all the food that I need. And by fiber rich carbohydrates, I'm talking about like quinoa, sweet potatoes. So two of my biggest takeaways from working one-on-one -on -one with a dietitian is the first one, no food is bad. Of course, we know like fried foods, you know, I'm, they aren't the best for you, but I'm talking about, you know, like you go down the vegetable aisle at your supermarket, they're all good for you. Like they, they provide vitamins, they provide your body fuel, nutrition. Foods like lima beans, watermelon, grapes, rice, is not bad in moderation. I like to have grapes whenever I'm craving sugar because I'm still getting, you know, the cravings here and there whenever I'm feeling stressed. So I always make sure that I have grapes on hand and I'll have maybe 10 or 15 grapes and then it kind of helps to uh, get over that hump. You know, are lima beans bad for me? No, but they may have more starch in them. So they may be, I should have lima beans every day. But my point is when you're looking down the vegetable aisle, don't look at lima beans or corn or watermelon or grapes and say, you're bad, I can never have you. Absolutely not. And that's uh, one of the things that I really, you know, have to erase from my brain because when I was on Weight Watchers, you know, if I wanted lima beans, it was gonna cost me a lot of points. So then the thinking is, well, if lima beans are costing me five points, then I might as well just go and get a French fry because it's five points. So you see what I mean? like. Whenever you're constantly thinking about food and thinking about is it good or bad, it just creates a really unhealthy relationship. That has been, you know, one of the biggest takeaways for me with this healthy balanced plate approach because it's so nice just to like think in my mind, okay, I have my dinner plate, here's my vegetables, my protein, and my fiber rich carbs, and then I don't have to calculate, you know, points or calories. And the second takeaway is just that, that I don't have to count anything. 
um, because I was really scared whenever after our first one-on-one -on -one meeting and she said okay we'll meet back in a month and I'm like I'm scared I'm not gonna lose any weight because I really don't believe you I don't think that I can lose weight if I'm not counting calories and she said just trust me and she was right now four months into this it's still kind of like plays with my mind a little bit but it's working and the best thing is I'm not hungry and I'm not craving high calorie treats. Like once in a while when I'm feeling stressed, I'm going through a little bit of a stressful thing right now in my personal life, I will get that craving. But you know what? I talked about this in my emotional eating video. If I'm going through a very bad time and I just decide I want a vanilla milkshake, I will sit down, just close my eyes for five, 10 seconds and say, why do I want the milkshake? What is it about the milkshake that I need? And most of the time it's just that I need something to soothe me. So I'll tell myself, well, have some Greek yogurt instead. And tomorrow when you wake up, if you still want milkshake, have the milkshake. And you know, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I forgot about the milkshake. I'm really trying to become mindful of my emotions. And whenever I'm feeling emotional, or stressed or angry or sad you know I'll just sit and think about well why am I feeling this way and most of the time like the craving just goes away now I was recently away in the Mediterranean and I was really tired one day because I hadn't had time to have breakfast we were running late so we didn't have lunch so it was about two in the afternoon I hadn't eaten all day and I was getting really grumpy really tired and feeling run down so we stopped at a place and I saw a Mars bar. And I thought, I'm getting that Mars bar. I don't care, I'm on vacation. So I got the Mars bar, I took one bite and I thought I was gonna throw up. The Mars bar tasted nothing like the way I remember it tasting. Now, did I eat the rest of the Mars bar? I did because I was hungry and I knew I wasn't gonna be getting food for another couple of hours and I didn't wanna pass out. But the point is, since I haven't been bringing sugar into my house in the last three months, I feel now when I eat something sweet, it doesn't taste that great anymore. And that's so sad to me. <laughs> no, I'm just being silly because I know sugar is not good for me. But the other important thing I wanted to tell you about this, I had the Mars bar. We eventually went back to the ship, had supper. I went to bed. I was in so much pain all night. I thought, what is going on? My joints just throbbed all night. I got up and I took a Tylenol for arthritis. I thought, maybe it's my arthritis. Just throbbed all night and drove me nuts. I didn't get any sleep. So it had to be the sugar. So it's like, oh my gosh, if that is the kind of reaction that sugar creates for my body, do I really want to be you know, putting that into my body? And the answer is no. So I'm really proud of myself because I am, I'm learning to eat properly, but I'm also like learning the connection to food and understanding how certain foods don't interact well. So I'm really becoming mindful of the food that I put into my mouth and I pay attention, you know, afterwards, how do I feel? Like, does my stomach feel upset? Do I have any pain in my body? And most of the time I'm pretty good, but I do find like, say if uh, I have, maybe a splurge and I'll have, you know, a cookie or, you know, a piece of cheesecake or something, I pay for it afterwards. So I really have to ask myself now, is it really worth it? I could have a mouthful and be okay, but if I, you know, have the whole thing, then I'm not. So I'm really proud that I'm becoming more mindful about the food that I put into my body. And I'm thinking about the food more as fuel than, um, uh, something to pacify me and make me, you know, get over a difficult time. So whenever I meet with a nutritionist, you know, we talk about what we're eating. She's shared some sites where I can go and find healthy recipes. We talk about movement. Like she told me it would be nice if I could set some goals, like maybe 10 minutes, three times a week, just, you know, start walking. I walked a lot when I was away. Some days, I think one day I did nine miles of walking. I, you know, go from basically couch potato to nine miles a day. That was really um, a lot to do. I know that I have to add movement into my plan to kind of help me lose weight a little quicker maybe, or 
you know, to tone up my body and also for my heart health and mental health, uh, exercise does help. But I'm not stressing about Kathy, you have to exercise a half an hour every day, seven days a week, because I know I'm just setting myself up for failure. And at this point, I just wanna get the eating right, I wanna get that down pat, and I feel when my body is ready, then you know I will make room for the exercise. Okay, so let's get back to the half plate method. So basically, you don't have to measure anything, but you know, be reasonable. Like don't have two platefuls of food if you're looking to lose weight or you know for your uh, fiber rich carbs, don't load it up so that you can't see the plate at all or don't have it you know like this high. Just be reasonable. So for my vegetables, well vegetables are important because they fill us up and they don't have a lot of calories in them. I like broccoli, cauliflower, I love all vegetables really, I just don't like peas. So most of the time I eat broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, uh, salads. I can't think, like I'll eat corn. Uh, so if I was having corn, I wouldn't put half of my plate corn. I might put a third or a quarter of the one half side of vegetables and then have the other two thirds all broccoli. So still I'm mindful that yes, I know nothing is off limits, but I also know that certain things, you know, I don't want to like have a heaping amount of them. For me, my uh, quarter, part of protein is chicken 99% of the time and maybe once or twice a week red meat. I don't like any other type of meat. I don't like fish. And then protein is important because it helps to build and maintain muscle mass. It keeps the immune system healthy and it also helps to keep us full. And this was the one thing that we figured out about me when I first met with her one-on-one. -on -one. I was not getting anywhere near the amount of protein that I needed. And I have found by including protein in my three meals every day that that does help me, like my blood sugar levels stay even. It keeps me feeling fuller so I'm not, you know, getting the three o'clock munchies. Now, did we set out and say, well, you have to eat so many grams of protein a day? No, we're just uh, talking about eating the balanced plate approach. So I'm not counting calories, I'm not counting grams of protein. In my head, I have this plate tattooed in my brain and I can just look at my plate whenever I'm fixing my meals. Okay, I kind of know the proportions. The other quarter of the plate is fiber rich, complex carbohydrates like quinoa, lentils, sweet potato, whole wheat, oatmeal, corn, kidney beans. So fiber rich carbs are important to fill us up. They keep our bowels regular. They stabilize our sugar levels so we don't get those spikes when we are craving sugar. They provide us with energy, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. So I'm just looking on my computer. I'm looking at the slides. I'm just gonna read it to you. So balanced meals are important because they keep your body properly nourished they increase your energy levels, they stabilize your blood sugar, improves your mood. So it helps you to meet your dietary needs, so your protein, your fiber, healthy fat and vitamins. It helps to decrease mindless snacking and overeating due to hunger. And that's what I used to be like when I would not, I'd skip a meal or I wouldn't get enough protein. And then come three o'clock, I'm in the cupboard looking for, you know, anything with sugar in it. So I don't have that so much anymore and it also helps decrease stress and anxiety around food. So a balanced meal is composed of protein, fiber rich carbs and fruits and vegetables. So just to give you an example, what a balanced meal looks like. You can see from this photo, half of the plate is vegetables. As I said, they provide vitamins and minerals, fiber, water, and color. So you don't want to be eating boring, bland looking food all the time. You want to make it interesting, right? Because we do also eat with our eyes. And that's why it's nice to sit down. You know, don't be watching TV. Don't be on your phone. Just sit down and just pay attention to what you're eating. Appreciate the color, the texture. Put your food on pretty plates. All of these things really do help because I find whenever I'm on my phone and just, you know, shoveling food in my mouth, I'm not mindful of what I'm eating. And an hour later, it seems that I'm going to be hungry and I'm going to be eating all the wrong things. Well, we want half of our plate with vegetables because they fill us up longer without 
increasing our caloric intake, they help to reduce the risk of chronic disease. Now, a quarter of the plate should be protein because protein gives us energy, vitamins, and minerals. And protein is very important because it helps to build and maintain muscle mass, heal tissue, helps keep our immune system healthy, and helps to keep us full and feeling satisfied. This is one of the biggest takeaways for me. Just by having protein at different times throughout the day, I really honestly can tell you that it has really helped with those um, spikes. Like I used to get a really big dip in the afternoon around three o'clock and I just want something sugary. So instead I might have some almonds and a cheese stick or I could have, you know, some Greek yogurt. And then the other quarter of the plate is fiber rich carbs, which provide us with energy, fiber, vitamins and minerals. So carbs help to fill us up and keep us full for longer. They stabilize our energy, blood sugar, and our mood, and they promote uh, bowel regularity. But without getting too personal, have you ever noticed from your own experience that whenever you don't eat like a balanced meal that sometimes you can get constipated? Or if you eat, say, too much fat or uh, greasy foods, you know, it can go the other way where you're stuck in the bathroom for a long time. That's another really important thing, eating balanced meals, is that it just helps our body to be regular and I guess run better. Think of your body as a car and you have to like keep taking good care of it if you want your car to last you. Now with the colder weather coming, I've had a few questions, what about soup? And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure and I'm meeting her at the end of October and I'll get back to you with that. But what I could gather from the notes when I was doing the research for this video is if you're having soups or stews, that's perfectly fine, but just kind of think as your bowl of soup as your plate. So say if there's chicken in it, as much chicken as say the palm of your hand. If there's, you obviously want to load up more on vegetables. If there's maybe rice in it, maybe don't take so much rice if you're making say chicken and rice soup. Um, I really have to dive deeper on that one and figure it out for myself before I can really give you you know, the right information, but that is on the top of my list because in the winter time, instead of, you know, just sitting down and plate thing, it might be better to have stews or soups. So I really have to uh, research this and I'll be sure to get back to you on that. So I'm just going to give you some quick examples of a balanced breakfast. And this is what I eat for breakfast, like 99% of the time. I actually have a video about this that I created a couple of years ago, and I've been eating this every day for probably the last five to seven years. So I have Greek yogurt. I buy the Oikos 2% vanilla. I know I can get the 0%, the no fat, I hate it. I've tried adding vanilla, I just, I hate it. I hate the texture, I hate the taste. So it's very important for me to eat what makes me happy. Uh, I don't wanna like look forward to breakfast every day and know that I have to eat this stuff that I don't wanna eat. So it's really important for me to uh, like the taste and the texture. So I was a bit concerned because I do put a little bit of granola on my berries and yogurt, but the nutritionist looked at it and she said, yes, it does have some sugar in, but as long as I'm only using like a quarter of a cup once a day, because everything else is balanced, it should be fine. But obviously if I was eating a cup of the granola, well, this, it's not the best choice. So I'll have about a cup of my Greek yogurt, the Oikos 2% vanilla yogurt. And then I'll buy a thing of raspberries, a thing of blueberries. I'll wash them, mix them together. And then I just take some real Canadian maple syrup, not that, you know, fake stuff and use less than a teaspoon to drizzle over my berries and they stay in my fridge and that will last for about a week. I like the, the taste of the little bit of liquid that it makes. So I'm not using a lot of maple syrup and this is what works for me. So then I'll just like put a little bit, like maybe an eighth or a quarter cup of the granola on it. And that fills me up, you know, four hours. That's been working for me. And then an example of something that I would have for lunch is I would have like a turkey sandwich. So I would buy like the turkey at the deli department. I always try to get like the lowest salt content because uh, I just don't like the taste of salt. And then I would have, you know, whole grain bread, just put a tiny little bit of butter on it, slap on some lettuce, a slice of cheese, tomatoes, and that is a balanced 
lunch because I have my turkey, which is a protein, my bread, which is my fiber rich carbs, and the tomato and the lettuce is um, my vegetable. So that's a balanced meal. And then an example for dinner, I love stir fry and I actually have made a video about my stir fry. You can go check it out. And I put in about eight cups of vegetables. So I'll use like mushrooms, celery, carrots, broccoli, snap peas, whatever vegetables you like. And then I'll usually put in about, I think two, they're about six ounce breasts. I get them from the butcher, uh, boneless skinless chicken breasts. Then we have like leftovers for the next day and that really keeps me full. So I'll link that video here. And then my go-to snack, like I said, I'm happy eating the same thing over and over again. I don't need like a huge variety of things. My go-to snack is I will have about 10 almonds, just raw almonds and with a mozzarella cheese stick. And that is what I eat in a day. And occasionally I might have like a honey crisp apple there in season now, or I'll have an orange in the afternoon. I'm, I'm not bringing any junk into the house, no candy, no chips. I'm really trying to follow like this balanced approach. So I'm gonna stop here for today because I think that's a lot of information for you to absorb. I know it was a lot for me to talk about. So bookmark this video and come back and rewatch it if you have questions. Like I said, I'm still learning. I'm not perfect. Sometimes, you know, I still go out to eat because I have to be able to sustain this. And you know what? So far, it's really working for me and I'm really, really happy. So I will be doing some meal prep videos. I'll be doing some what I eat in a day videos, but I just don't know what I'm gonna show you because like I said, I always eat the same thing for breakfast. Like I'm pretty boring that way. Like I'm just, I'm happy eating the same thing all the time. So in the meantime, go and check out my weight loss playlist. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of these types of videos, leave me a comment and I will do my very best to uh, maybe do another one in a couple of weeks or a month's time. Thanks for watching. Bye.